Hey BC, it's me Roger back with another video. Cheers. Water. Uh, before we go any further in the background, we'll see if I get away with it. It's possession with African dub. Uh, the name of the album is Off World One. Came out in like 1996 on Submeta. Uh, basically, Bill Laswell with uh, Fode Musa Suso and Ayabding and Fusini Koyate. Um, yeah, I've got a huge collection of Bill Laswell stuff, mostly on CD. Although, uh, it's on LP as well, but I was way into the guy for a while, and this is one of my favorites see if I get away with it. So I wanted to come on and do uh, a vinyl update. Um, stuff besides, you know, what I got at the record show. Um, other things I've accumulated over the last month or so. Not a lot. Um, well, let's just get right to it. Um, first and foremost, Andrews Allen unit, lines and dots. This is Anders in Stockholm, you all know Anders, uh, he put this out on the Signal and Sound Records label. Great, everybody needs to get this, um, you jazz heads. Um, yeah, I ordered it from him as soon as he made it available. Um, I like how we both seem to be on a red and black graphic design kick. Kind of cool. Uh, so what we have here is Anders on guitar, and uh, not gonna be able to pronounce your name, so I'm just gonna say it's trumpet and saxophones, uh, guitar, bass, and drums. And Anders wrote all the compositions, and uh, a really beautiful record, Anders. Really, um, uh, you know, musically it has a definite Ornette Coleman influence. Uh, angular unison lines and uh, but most notably an absence of harmonic content. Um, Andrews mostly drops out during solos so there's no uh, chordal elements during the solos um, which frees up the rest of the band uh, to play in a more free way um, and the band plays very well together uh, they obviously um, are familiar with one another. Um, one thing that I think I hear, I, I could be wrong, but I think I, might, I even hear a little bit of Swedish folk music in some of the themes. Uh, some interesting scales that sound to me like, um, uh, what do I know about Swedish folk music? Nothing, but um, I guess Opeth draws on that sort of um, scale or mat material. Uh, anyway, correct me if I'm wrong, Anders. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful job. Um, everybody needs to get this. I'm gonna put a link down below or you can get it directly from his website. Great job, Anders. Um, so yeah, some other things. Uh, I guess I'll show this since it's this odd size. I don't really collect 10 inches, but I saw this at the store and I was like, this is just too cool. Um, and apparently this is like the eighth repress or something. I think this originally came out in 2007 or something. So this is Torch. Porsche, I think it's Torch. Uh, in return, kind of cool packaging where there's this sticker on the, uh, the uh, sleeve here, which is unfortunately this cloudy stuff. Um, and then you have this gatefold by John Dyer Baisley from Baroness. This is a three inch CD attached to this plastic thing. And then and, uh, apparently there's a zillion different colors. I don't know what you'd call this sort of gray green. I don't know, rock's pretty hard. I've got some other albums by them. And um, yeah, this kicks ass. 
10 inches, they're an odd size, hard to, they're kind of hard for me to deal with. In fact, yeah, I'll put that over there. Okay, so um, another VC shout out here is uh, to Jeff Glowing Double O Cabbage. Hey Jeff, if you're watching. Um, as you all know, he has a radio show up in British Columbia. And uh, I try to tune in over the web on Wednesday nights. I uh, can't always do it, but I try to tune in. And uh, I think it was the show where Mike Bostoni and Reggie was, was visiting. That was pretty awesome. Uh, anyway, they played this, and I thought, wow, I thought, I thought it was a Miles Davis outtake from On the Corner. But it turns out it's this band, Fontenelle. Vitamin F. Did I show this already? I feel like maybe I have. I can't remember. I don't think so. Um, this came out in 2012 on Southern Lord. Uh, very different from what I'm used to hearing from Southern Lord. This is flat out funky jazz. Uh, mostly instrumental, I think. All instrumental. Can't remember. Um, yeah, right out of the Electric Miles bag. Uh, really cool. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, another VC uh, related pickup, uh, Tony, Mr. Fartboy. Don't know if you watch, but hey, Tony. Uh, he did a whole video devoted to this record, and um, this is Goat's new record, Commune, on Sub Pop. Um, and I thought, well, gee, you know, that sounds great. So I picked it up. And in fact, I picked up their first record as well because I saw it at the store. I'm going to show that separately, but uh, uh, yeah. So I mean, first of all, you gotta love the packaging with the, uh, you know, the die cut here, and uh, this one, which is uh, world music. This is on the British label. Rocket recordings. It also has a totally great die cut. It's uh, really hard to resist. And it's on green vinyl, as you can see back there. Um, yeah, psychedelic as hell. And uh, yeah, I guess that's what you'd have to call this music. Um, I, I think Andreas. Sonic Mainliner talked about this this record. Said this one was maybe better. I think maybe I agree. I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting. Um, I don't know. It's cool. It's very strange. It reminds me of uh, Amon Duel 2 in a way. That tribal kind of manic psychic psychedelic kind of sound. Um, kind of punky vocals. Um, yeah, I, I need to explore this some more. Um, thanks, Tony, for the recommendation. Um, definitely as vinyl objects, they're awesome. Um, better get moving here. I'm rambling. Uh, this I never expected to ever have, but um, on Facebook, the Southern Lord label, well, sometimes they'll put up these things saying, you know, we have a few copies left, order now, um, often in the European store. Anyway, there was one of those messages on Facebook, and I've always wanted this record. Uh, this is Earth's first album. It's originally on Sub Pop on CD, and then Southern Lord did a, this vinyl issue uh, when, I'm not sure, 2009, I think. Long out of print, and it's like they had 25 copies, and so I snapped it up. Uh, they're all gone now. Um, yeah, what can I say, you know, early doom drone stuff and usual Southern Lord production values, beautiful gatefold, and heavy vinyl, totally psyched to have been able to snag that. Here's a record, um, also a reissue of uh, but the first time on vinyl, this is uh, Boris with Mertzbell. What's the title here? Sunbaked Snow Cave. This is not on Southern Lord, it's on a label called uh, Double H Noise Industries. 
Uh, another beautiful Southern Lord style uh, gatefold artworks by Stephen O'Malley. Um, this was actually a lot mellower than I thought it was going to be. At least it starts out that way. Um, you know, I was expecting Mertz to be a little more sonic assault. Um, it gets there. Really cool. Uh, here's something Relapse has been hyping, and I guess I fell for it. This is Mere Curves. Uh, debut EP, self-titled EP. She's a Danish, sort of one-woman band, but there's a bass by someone, Thorip Sorlop. <laughs> Good luck. Um, but yeah, uh, one-woman band, black metal. Um, I think it's beautiful. I do. Um, I don't know why black metal has to be recorded so badly, but I guess that's part of the thing. This is an excellent EP. I'm looking forward to her debut LP. Uh, moving in a different direction, uh, last few new records. Uh, well, this one, uh, it was still sealed, but I bought it, you know, at Grimey's too, so it was a, at a used price. Um, this is Y Oaks uh, Civilian on Merge from 2011. Heard a lot about these guys. Um, they have a new album out. Which I'm going to show, um, and I thought, you know, for seven bucks, I'll check them out. And uh, sure enough, this is a, this is beautiful um, dream pop, I guess. Um, so I was like, okay, I got to go run next door. And I'm going to get you know, uh, their new one, Shriek, also on Merge from this year. Um, this is great, and you know, so I liked those two so much. I went back and bought their first album, The Knot. From 2011. Uh, I think it's maybe a little bit before, but this is the Merge edition from 2011. Um, so now this band, Y Oak, I think they're from like the Baltimore area. A lot of dream pop coming out of the Baltimore area. Um, I could be wrong about that. I don't know. Um, so I kind of came at them backwards, and this is a beautiful, beautiful pop album. I mean, um, but this is a much more guitar-driven sort of indie rock with some pop elements record. Now, if I had you know, known about them back in 2007 or whenever this came out and then followed the progression um, to Civilian, which adds more synthesizers and more, more pop elements uh, to this, which is just, um, uh, there's not a lot of guitar on here. Um, you know, maybe I'd be bummed out, but working backwards, um, I think this is a, their masterpiece, and they were just working their way towards it. I, I don't know. I really dig this record, as does my wife. It's, um, you know, one of those, one of those great pop records. That does it for new vinyl. Uh, haven't done a lot of digging, um, but I got a couple things. Uh, this is from eBay. I got got to thank Chris Cole, John Coltrane 68. Uh, he uh, he'll put these eBay links on Facebook, and um, <laughs> you know sometimes it's for these 800, 1200 dollar records and stuff. But uh, anyway, he put a link to this. He said, "Oh, good price on this." And um, I went and looked at it through the Facebook link, right? And um, I was like, "No, I'm going to pass." And then I don't know. A few days later. Uh, I'm looking at Facebook on my phone and this ad comes up, comes up with this record. It says, you sure, sure you don't want this fucking record? I'm like, wow. So I went and looked, it's still available, so I went ahead and bit. Uh, this is Alice Coltrane's Eternity. Uh, Warner Brothers from uh, 1976. Um, it's lovely, it was still in the shrink wrap. Uh, it looked like it had been played maybe only once or twice. Really can't go wrong with Alice Coltrane, uh, and it really was a bargain for the condition it was in. So, uh, thanks, Chris. Thanks, Facebook, for you know pushing me, but it's kind of weird. Uh, went to Great Escape. Hadn't been there in a while, and dug through the jazz things, and I, I found a few things. It was cool. Um, this is great. Elvin Jones, Genesis. This is on. Uh, Blue Note, United Artist from uh, 
what's your 72 maybe uh, I remember Derek showing this record and needle dropping this record on a video a long time ago and I've always been on the lookout for it and I've seen it a couple times but totally trashed this is in decent condition it's not expensive um, side one especially is just really dreamy um, who do we have on here uh, George Pearl on bass, Dave Lieben on saxophones, Joe Farrell on saxophones, Frank Foster on saxophones, Elvin on drums. Um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful album. So happy to find that. I uh, took a chance on this, uh, but it's pretty cool. The United Jazz and Rock Ensemble teamwork. Uh, didn't recognize some of these players, some of them I did. Everhard Weber on bass. Charlie Mariano on the saxophones, Albert Mangelsdorf on trombone, uh, Wolfgang Downer on piano and synthesizer, he's a big VC fave. Uh, this is on a German label, Mood Records, from 78. Uh, uh, really nice fusion, um, sometimes a little tight-assed for me. but. Yeah, I, I dig it. Uh, took a chance on this as well. Uh, it's on a label I really like, Muse. This is Link Chamberland, A Place Within. Uh, guitar player with Dave Lehman again on saxophones. And the rhythm section, not familiar with. Um, you know, some standards, some originals. Uh, it was recorded in 1976, came out in 77. Um, I'd never heard of the guy, uh, but I thought, you know, that'd be pretty cool. And it is pretty cool. Uh, the guy has monster chops. Good grief. The guy can play his ass off. Um, but to my taste, and, and people with, I don't know how to say this without, Sometimes virtuos virtuosity gets in the way of expression, and I'm not going to say that's going on here because it really is killer. Um, I mean, I bet live it would be uh, pretty mind blowing. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. This is a cool record. Um, yeah. Uh, here's one that is a little bit beat, but. Very funky. Charles Erland, Odyssey. This is on Mercury from 1976. Um, I don't love a lot of the singing on here, but boy, the funky keyboards are awesome. Uh, there's some other great players on here, like Johnny Abercrombie and Ron Carter, uh, Michael Gravaniak. Um, yeah, cool stuff. Uh, we're getting there. Uh, yeah, just a couple more that um, I really didn't dig all that much. Oh, this is Tony Williams' Lifetime, Ego. It's on Polydor from uh, drummer. Um, sometimes drummers shouldn't be leaders, um, although early lifetime stuff is freaking awesome. Um, didn't love this either, uh, but I got it because uh, I got Mike Knock again and it's on the Harvest label. Uh, Michael White on Amplified Violin, Mike Knock on Piano and Fender Rhodes, Ron McClure on Double Bass and Eddie Marshall on Drums. Recorded live. Uh, I bet if this cover wasn't so trashed, it would be uh, really beautiful. Um, but it is trashed, and um, so kind of groovy jazz. Um, 
It did knock me out. Um, what can I say? Um, this might be the last one of these vinyl updates for a while. I've had an unexpected, um, rather big expense, which is uh, my piano. My digital piano has given up the ghost after 15 years of love and abuse. Yeah, the pedals went haywire. It's, can't get parts, it's not fixable. Um, so I ordered a new piano. I uh, won't get it for a few weeks. And in the meantime, I feel like my hands have been cut off. At least I have the drums to bang on, the guitar and stuff. But uh, um, yeah, I was really used to playing every day. Um, and so, not gonna be able to spend money on records like I have been for a while before we get things back to normal. Um, but I have my contest coming up. I'll do a little update this week and then drawing next weekend. And uh, there have been some videos I've been wanting to do uh, from stuff that I already have in my collection, like um, artist profiles and label profiles, things like that. Uh, and I'll be able to maybe join in more with the threads, like the typographical thread. That's great. Um, maybe I'll try to jump on that this week. Anyway, folks, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.